Hi everyone. Let's talk about the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral. Let's say we have a circle and we have four points on it. So one, two, three, four. And we connect the consecutive vertices. So we have one, two, three, and four and say we draw the diagonals 1 and 2. So let's label the vertices. We have A, B, C, and D. We're going to call we're going to call this length here A, this one B, this one C, and this one D. And our goal here is to find what AC equals to in terms of a function in terms of A, B, C, and D, and what B, D equals to as a function of, well, we should write it as a different function, G, A, B, C, and D. And if you've seen our proof of Stewart's theorem, this is going to be a piece of cake for you, but if you haven't, don't worry, we're going to do it from scratch. The main idea is that this angle and the opposite interior angle are supplementary. So let's call this phi, well let's call this one theta and this one phi. So angle ABC is equal to theta and angle ADC is equal to phi. So theta is equal to pi or 180 degrees minus phi and that implies that cos theta is equal to cos of pi minus phi and if you're familiar with trigonometric identities this is equal to negative cos of phi. Now what we're going to do is invoke the cosine law. So by cosine law we get two equations. We get that a squared plus b squared, we're applying it to angle ABC, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab times cos theta is equal to ac squared and by applying it to angle adc we find that we have c squared plus d squared minus 2cd times cos of phi is equal to ac squared so let's do some manipulations here. The first equation leads to a squared plus b squared minus ac squared over 2ab is equal to cos of theta. And we know that that's equal to negative cos of phi. But cos of phi, according to this equation, is equal to, well, we have the negative of cos of phi. So we have negative of c squared plus d squared minus AC squared over 2CD. So let's let's take out the negative by distributing it. So we get AC squared minus C squared minus D squared over 2CD. So on the left side we have this and on the right side we have this. What we're gonna do is cancel out the twos and now we're gonna cross multiply by a b c d so we get a squared plus b squared minus a c squared times c d is equal to a c squared minus c squared minus d squared times a b and now we're just going to expand out because it doesn't seem like we can get away without it so we get a squared c d plus b squared c d minus AC squared times CD is equal to AC squared times AB minus ABC squared minus ABD squared. So let's take the terms over to different sides according to their signs. So we get a squared cd plus b squared cd plus abc squared plus abd squared is equal to a squared times ab plus cd. 
And remarkably, we can factor the left side. And I'll do it step by step so you can see how. We get AC, by taking this term and this term, we get AC times AD plus BC. And by taking the second term and the fourth term, we get BD times BC plus AD. And now we can factor out this from both terms. So we get AC plus BD times AD plus BC. And in both cases, we get that this is equal to AC squared times AB plus CD. So AC is equal to AC plus BD times AD plus BC over AB plus CD and square root over the whole thing. So we did it. We found what AC is equal to in a remarkable factorization. And just so you know, we can find BD in the same way. We find that BD squared is equal to AC plus BD times AB plus CD divided by AD plus BC. And I'll leave that symmetric derivation to you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.